Here we go. Welcome everybody for our uh, department seminar of this week. We are close to finish our semester and we are um, very honored to cross the ponds of the Atlantic and go to the other side and, and, and be in Brazil with uh, our, our, um, our guest today, Professor Olga Sato from Sao Paulo University in Brazil. So uh, uh, some words about, about Professor Sato. Um, Olga is a professor in physical oceanography at the Oceanographic Institute of the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Her research interests involve the study of large scale oceanic uh, circulation focused on the South Atlantic Ocean. She currently studies the aspect of meridion meridional overturning circulation or the MOC as indicator for changes in climate under the perspective of oceanic fluxes and water mass formation. She is a co-PI of the project Sambao, <clears throat> an effort to understand the role of the Southern Atlantic in the MOC system. A line of moored pressure sensors inverted echo sounders on the western side of the Southern Atlantic at 34.5 degrees south and maintenance cruises are used to monitor the changes in MOC since 2009. These activities are part of the observational effort carried out by the initiative known as Southern Atlantic MOC or SAMOC, which she is part of the SAMOC executive, executive committee. So uh, today, um, Professor Sato is going to talk about the South Atlantic subtropical mode water. What do we know so far? So, and the podium is yours. Somebody talking, okay. so please mute yourself, except us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me put my presentation on. So can you see it's it's on? Yeah, it's excellent. Okay. Full mode. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Nicholas, for the invitation. It's really an honor to be here and to be able to talk about my uh, research. Um, but I'm not talking. Going to talk about MOC today. I'm going to talk about another uh, uh, project that I'm involved, which is the study of the subtropical mode water, and what do we know so far here in the South Atlantic which is in the region that we didn't have much uh, knowledge of uh, the, this um, permanent feature in the oceans, large scale oceans. So this is the outline for my presentation. And I'm going to start by presenting uh, what we know and what, are, well, what physically, what uh, do they mean, what do they represent? So and I don't know if you are familiar with the circulation of the South Atlantic, it's a very interesting uh, ocean. I'm just focusing on mostly on the region of the subtropical part. Um, here we have the Brazil current on the Western as a Western boundary current. And on the Eastern side, you, we have the intrusion here of the Agulhas current, which comes from the Indian ocean. And then for the conservation, due to the conservation of potential vortices, it goes back to its uh, uh, ocean. So we have a retroflexion here. And if you look at, you, you, we see a form of a gyre in the subtropical region. And those are the currents that form this, this gyre. And the Brazil current is the Western boundary. And up at the Southern part, we have the South, uh, the South Atlantic current here, which goes eastward. So it's a very dynamic uh, region. We have, a, you know, it's like a, blending machine of lots of uh, features going on. And the important thing is, among all these interesting dynamical features, you have the formation of what we call the subtropical mold water. And what are those? They are water that are, you can define them as a, not a water mass, not a water uh, uh, mass, kind, but it's just a piece of a, a huge, uh, bigger water mass, which is the uh, 
uh, the central water, South Atlantic central water. And it has a characteristic of having a very low potential vorticity. So this is the important thing that we can tell about the, uh, the subtropical modal water. But how can we get to the point that this water, water mass has such a, a small, low potential uh, vorticity? Because it's a very homogeneous uh, layer of water. So I'm changing the page here. For some reason, I cannot change page. Ah, here. Okay, so think about as a piece of the ocean, a slab of the ocean. And in the region that I'm talking about, we have, during the winter, we have a strong, strong uh, uh, penetration of uh, uh, atmospheric fronts, cold uh, uh, air masses that coming from the south. And then this starts to have a uh, form you know, what we call the precondition for the convection. So you have my uh, ocean here, you have a warmer water layers here, and then below you have the thermocline. So this is a very a superficial layers, layer of water, maybe 200, 300 meters. And you have the normal stratification. So uh, when at the beginning of the spring, at the middle of the spring season and the uh, winter season, or the autumn season and, it's, and uh, winter season, uh, because of the cooling from the, the atmosphere. So this water mass uh, started to lose buoyancy and then uh, it's subject to uh, uh, vertical mixing. So we have a, a deep convection process going on. And then this water is, um, it, it sinks and it spread in the layer below here. And then with the beginning of uh, spring and uh, su summer season, when it gets warmer, this water gets trapped in the layer below here. Um, but at the surface here, you have, uh, you have the restratification. It goes back to, it was at the beginning of this process, begin, uh, at the beginning of this process. But the important thing is, uh, it looks like a process of mixed layer formation, but as this water uh, is subject to such a strong uh, heat loss during the season. And depending on the year, it can lose more or less uh, heat to the atmosphere. So you have more or less uh, uh, formation of this water. And some of them get, get, uh, get trapped here in, in the sub subsurface and it stays there for, uh, for the next year. And the next year, the, this whole process starting, it starts again. And then you have this con uh, continuous feeding of this uh, the, the formation of the of the, of the uh, tropical model water. Um, those uh, th this phenomena is important because it can have long term changes in the oceanic heat content since you have changes in the in the in the heat at the upper layers. So and. If you uh, think about the region that we have the formation of the water, of the subtropical mode water, it's, it is just in the way of the upper limb of the, sub, of the uh, South Atlantic MOC. So depending on the layer of mode water that you form, this is the layer that is gonna be affected by the passage or the way the, 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 way the, the upper limb of the South Atlantic uh, meridional of return circulation. So this is an important impact, has an important impact. Um, the process between uh, for the formation it involves a coupling between the atmosphere and the ocean. So also, uh, reminding that this has uh, have uh, consequences for climate. It can introduce variability in the supply of ventilated wa ventilated water for subduction through thermocline because when this water goes down, it more or less it's uh, stopped at the level of the thermocline. But depending on the strength of this formation some of the water can go below the thermocline. So this is a way you can have a communication between the upper layer and the lower layer, sending you know, um, a water that was recently ventilated, had you know, contact with the atmosphere to below the thermocline. And you know that it's really difficult to send water from to, like, a two layer model. You, it's, it's really hard to send a uh, message from the upper layer to the lower layer. So this, is, has, an, this has an important, uh, contribution to that. And also, um, there are some studies showing that they have impact 
on the biological, uh, chemical biological uh, in, uh, aspect of the ocean, for instance. It could be a way that CO2 can be subtracted from the ocean and sent to the lower la layers. There's, there are studies showing impacts on the nutrients and, and CO2. So because of that, uh, the study of the mold water is, uh, it's not only physical uh, aspect, but also physical biological interactions. Uh, the mold water in all basins here, um, I'm showing in a global, uh, all global map. Um, the, the first uh, uh, mold water study is the one that's in uh, North Atlantic. Uh, it's called the 18 degree water, 18 degree C water. It's a, a water that's a homogeneous and it has the temperature of 18 degree C. And it be, has been studied uh, in many, many, many uh, uh, articles. But also you have in the Pacific Ocean, uh, the South and the North, you have some in the Indian Ocean, and here in the South Atlantic, we have the South Atlantic subtropical mold water, which is the one that I'm going to talk about. And if you notice, the, lo the location of the, the subtropical mold waters are right on the poleward pole side of the subtropical gyres. So we have a subtropical gyre, and the, in the colder side, you have the formation of this mold water. Just because of the mechanism that I, I just explained to you, because you have uh, cooling and uh, deep uh, water uh, convection and mixing and the water being trapped at the, at the depth. Uh, this is a section on a cruise that was taken in January of 2017. And it crossed the whole Atlantic at the latitude of 34 and a five degrees south. It's a, a cruise that left from uh, Cape Town in South Africa and went straight to the South America up to Montevideo. So it's a line that we monitor for the passage, the, the, the changes in the MOC. And for this kind of uh, study, we have to measure the section from surface to the bottom, from east to west completely. Uh, but the idea for me to show you this figure here is that the, at the layer here above 500 meter, you can see the subtropical mold water and it, its extension, we can uh, identify it along the whole uh, basin. So it's a, it's a feature that it's always there. Uh, you, I'm gonna show you that it's always there. And, and because of that, this impact in, that I just showed, the climate and the circulation and long-term variability, it's an important uh, feature of the ocean that we understand. So I'm, I'm gonna talk about, uh, a study that uh, we did here in 2014. And before that, uh, the only other uh, work that uh, had a, some co more, more comprehensive study of the mold water in the South Atlantic was from uh, Provost et al. In, in 1999. So there is a, a gap of many years that nobody studied the subtropical mold water. 15 years, nobody studied mold water, and could be because of lack of, lack of you know, measurements in the region. So in 2014, we took the advantage of uh, the Argo floats that we found in the, in the region. The Argo floats, as uh, you might know, it's this instrument that you can deploy, and it drifts uh, around 10 days at depth, and then it goes down uh, to 2,000 meters, and comes back up to the surface. And in the ascending uh, uh, trajectory, the, the instrument works as a CTD. So it measures temperature, conductivity, salinity, and, and as a function of depth. And when it gets to the surface, it sends this information to a satellite, and, which is sent to a, a processing station. And this data is, uh, are distributed uh, almost uh, near real time. And then after the transmission, it goes back to the, to the layer that it, it's just uh, uh, it's drifting for another 10 days. So we took advantage of all this data. And at the time, we found 86,000 profiles in the South Atlantic for the whole South Atlantic. And after that, we were trying to uh, identify you know, 
uh, how many of those profiles had subtropical mold work. And we did some uh, pre-processing, quality control, interpolated, and then um, this is the result that we found. Okay, so uh, let me just talk about some, a uh, little bit about the uh, criteria to, uh, uh, to identify uh, mold water in this uh, temperature and salinity profiles. So the, uh, the potential vorticity uh, that I'm looking for is uh, defined by this formula. It's F is a Coriolis parameter divided by density. And here you have a D rho DZ, which uh, is the stratification of the water column. So we are looking for something that is very low. So anything that below 1.5, 10 to the minus 10 uh, per meter per sec a second, it's uh, something that we can uh, identify it as uh, mold water. And this number is more, it's basically the, the number that everybody uses in this, their studies to identify mold water uh, using uh, in-situ measurements. Uh, some people have tried to use um, a model, numerical model to identify and that in the model, depending on how the model behaves, so that value can vary a little bit in, in the number, but it always means that it's the lowest uh, potential vortices that you find in, in the water uh, layer. Uh, you can also use uh, the vertical stratification, uh, the, the temperature gradient uh, as a as a criteria also. So it means that it, it, it has to change less than one degree per 100 meters. So this is a, a criteria. And also um, we are tracking water that it's basically in the upper layers from 11 to 18 degrees C and the salinity also in, in this, uh, it's these values. Um, these are the values that we use to find uh, the, uh, the mold water using the Argo data. And here I have um, a distribution. It's more or less like a histogram. Uh, it's, a, it's a TS diagram and where I count in the color how many profiles I found uh, uh, with this uh, specific values of density. And we see there is a, so this is a normal or regular uh, TS diagram in the South Atlantic. But if we count the numbers, we see a, a huge number of profiles that are concentrated in one specific uh, range of density. This gives me the indication that mold water, it's, uh, should be in that, in that region. And after we uh, identify all the profiles that had somehow uh, uh, obey our criteria of uh, identification, we found stations along the whole basin, the whole, you know, basically between 30 and 40 south and occupying the whole region, a whole basin of the South Atlantic. And then we try to uh, divide these uh, stations into uh, small clusters, something that had uh, in common, parameters in common that we can divide different, uh, in different groups. So for that, we use the cluster analysis and taking into account that we are we based also based based on other studies, uh, they found uh, provost uh, at our studies they found three uh, types of mold water. So we decided to to look the same parameters. So we use three clusters to define. We use six parameters, and which is the location, the values of potential temperature, salinity, density, and time, depending on the time of the year. So it's important to separate. Uh, uh, the, uh, the season that we find these mold waters. And the interesting thing is that we, although cluster analysis is just a mathematical method, just a way to separate the different distinct points, group of points, but the clustering made sense, physical sense. We found the three mold waters uh, basically distinguishing by location. We have the Western side, the Eastern side and the Southern side. So all the, the clusters uh, indicating that this group of water are separated by the location, but you can say, okay, big deal. Okay, they are in the different region of the, of the ocean. But also if you look at the TS diagram of the selected ones, we found that some of them, the, the, the red ones are in this region of the Western boundary 
current, Brazil current. And they are all grouped in one region of the TS diagram. And the blue one on the Eastern side, it's grouped, grouped in another region. And the green one, which is the coldest here we have, and the Southern tip we have also uh, grouped in another region. And if you look at the distribution in the depth, so we have potential density here, but potential density could be a, a proxy for depth and is a function of, because heavier, uh, you have heavier density and lighter has uh, density and uh, indicating depth. So um, the, and the distribution along the longitude, we also see that, you know, they are all grouped in a certain level of the ocean. And here, I, I'm just, uh, this is an example of the profile configuration. We found basically two types of configuration or most of them, or most of them, they had this configuration. Some of them, depending on the time of the year, they have this configuration, which means that the homogeneous layer, so all this is identified as a low uh, potential vorticity criteria, but the homogeneous part is touching the surface, it out, outcrops at the surface. And this is the second stage. So this is the formation stage, and this is the second stage when we have the restratification of the, of the surface layer. So you have the homogeneous layer trapped in the subsurface. So this happens during the winter. And this is the configuration that we find uh, in the most, uh, the rest of the year. So uh, also uh, the selection of the profiles that had uh, subtropical mold water uh, divided by, uh, the water types, right? So here we have the, on the Western side, the Eastern side and the Southern side from July to October. Those are the ones that are touching the, the surface, the profile is touching the, surface, for the surface. Those are the ones uh, who indicate that the formation is taking place and the color indicates the, the layer thickness. So, uh, some of them, it's basically, they are basically on the border of uh, 200 and 300, but there are some indication that have a deep, uh, deep uh, uh, convecting, convective mix, 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 mixing. And from the other part of the year, the one that at submerged stage, we find a lot more of uh, profiles that uh, were following uh, that configuration. So I discuss a little bit here of the, of the role of the surface heat fluxes since it's a air sea interaction process and the way that the oceans interact with the atmosphere, the exchange of heat, exchange of energy, it's a, a one important component. And we see that uh, during the, the time that we have formation and here in, in, the, in the color map here above, I'm showing just the regular, uh, the mean uh, heat flux uh, at the surface, but per uh, square meter. But here, I'm also showing the integrated, uh, just integrating this in time. And we find the whole region here, which is in the integration. It's a, uh, re it's a region that we have loss of energy and a sustained loss of energy. Of, uh, of loss of uh, heat, flux, heat fluxes. And all the, uh, the profiles found, it's just, get, you know, falls on this region here. And the same thing, if you take this integrated uh, uh, heat and then show as a, a time, time and longitude uh, map uh, diagram, which is called the Hoff-Muller diagram, we see that all the formation here falls when we have the winter and also a little bit of uh, a spring uh, months because the ocean is cold, but it is still losing heat. Even it changed to spring, but the ocean is still changing. It's also uh, losing heat to the atmosphere. So it, you still have uh, uh, conditions for the formation of mold water. Another aspect that we also study is the role of eddies in the, uh, in the 
carrying, the transporting the subtropical mold water? Do they carry? How often that happens? Uh, is there any specific about cyclonic and cyclonic eddies? So we use uh, the definition uh, given by Shelton at all uh, 2011. It's, uh, they have a collection of all these uh, eddies cataloged, eddies found in the ultimate data catalog in the Oregon State University. So we use their data set and we try to use the, uh, for the definition, just the uh, closed contours to define the, the, the eddies in the aviso, the ultimate data, and try to match this with the Argo profiles that we found. And then we track eddies that also could be at surface or subsurface, because when you see an elevation or a depression in the altimeter data, it doesn't mean that it's on the surface. It could be anywhere in the, in the, in the ocean layer. So that's why we used uh, ev everything that had uh, uh, characteristic, car characteristic of being a, a closed contour. So from the, uh, the period that we study, um, independently, we had uh, 87, more than 87,000 eddies and 35,000 Argo profiles, and we try to match them. them. And then um, more than 6,000 matches with distinct uh, 107, more than 1,700 uh, eddies. Because uh, one eddy can be uh, crossed by the same Argo many times. So that's why uh, you have many uh, more uh, profiles uh, compared to the number of eddies. So uh, from those profiles, only less than 10% you know, we had uh, subtropical mold water. And from the ones that had subtropical mold water, uh, only se uh, less than 700 uh, were fine inside a, a, an eddy. Okay, so only uh, uh, 20% uh, of the, the eddies uh, match with the location of a subtropical mold water. And interestingly, we have uh, almost 80% of the eddies are anticyclonic and little over 20% is cyclonic. So, okay, so uh, eddy is like uh, anticyclonic uh, circulation or mold water, could be that mold water likes anticyclonic uh, circulation or is there any other uh, characteristic that we are, we are missing? So, uh, and this is a study by Souza et al. in 2011. And they found that if you look at the eddies in the South Atlantic, they are, more or less balanced by the anticyclonic and cyclonic. So, so there are something important or interesting thing going on with the eddies in um, connection with the uh, mold water somehow. So um, uh, let me just change a little bit now uh, of the, uh, the, the presentation here. I was just finishing presentation, presenting the the paper from 2014, but now I'm going, I wanna like to show you something more that happened after the, this, our first uh, article. And this was uh, a cruise that was done by a, a Brazilian Navy ship. And this is, as far as we know, the first cruise that we had that was organized specifically to study the mold water in the South Atlantic. So this is, uh, this is the, 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 these are the, the transects uh, done by the ship, CTD stations and collecting water samples. And at the time of this cruise, two Argo floats, especially spe program, uh, were la launched in the site A here, in the, just in the middle of the region that it was uh, sampled, and another one here at the tip of this region here. So we have Argo A and Argo B. And here in dots, you see that these two Argos, for some miracle of the nature, or we don't know why. It, it stayed in this region for two years. So it's, it's like the two uh, Argos were, you know, tethered. It was, you know, tied to the, that region. So they, for two years, they didn't move. It just uh, changed a little bit position, but it stayed in the region for the whole time. And that uh, gave, gives us a unique opportunity to study the formation of mold water for two cycles. And it's not even a fun uh, uh, more uh, uh, station. So we had this uh, 
um, opportunity to study that. It, it went up uh, uh, out of the region and then came back after at the end of the, the formation. But let's, let me talk a little bit about the CTD. So we had uh, the CTD that was in 2015. We have 45 CTDs, chemical analysis, and Argo. And the important or interesting thing is that we changed the little bit of the program of the, this Argo. The cycle was changed to be five days. The normal Argo, the cycle is 10 days. And so since we, we knew that this process could be a, a, a quick process of formation, so we changed the sampling rate in, in the vertical so we could see this process more you know, close by. And these are the uh, TS diagrams for the CTD stations, Argo and Argo A and B. And in gray here, you have the identification of the mold water in this, uh, in this uh, sections. And the analysis of the CTD data uh, shows that we have, since this was in April, April is not in the formation period. Formation period is from July to October. So this is April and then we found the mold water uh, uh, where we were expecting to be. It was below the main thermocline, the, the seasonal thermocline, above the main thermocline, and it's there. It's a very thick layer, 120 layer of homogeneous water. And it was interesting to see that uh, we found there. And in this, this is the, uh, the diagram for the, the first Argo, Argo A. And as it was deployed in, April of 2015. So we found as in, in agreement what, with to what we saw on the CTD data, we found the mold water here at the depths between 100 and 200, 150 meters. And since the, this Argo stay in the region for such a long time, you see you have the, the time series here of two years for May, another May and, now, and the, the second May, here, the third May here. So it stays here. And uh, when we uh, approach the formation period, then we started to see this isotherm, uh, isotherms to outcrop. So it, because of the, the cooling at the surface. And here we see a very fast process because if you look at here, this isotherm here, I think it should be or something around 15, uh, 15 and a half degrees Celsius. It was at 100 meters depth and then in the next measurements. So see, remember that this Argo float is sampling every five days. So this temperature of uh, the isotherm of uh, 15 and a half degrees, it went to the surface. So it, you have a change, uh, the change in the 100 meters uh, layer of water, you know, um, being uh, affected by this cooling or the, the mixing due to this cooling at the surface. And then you hear, you have this a window of uh, uh, to the atmosphere being open. So now we have a connection between the atmosphere and the deeper part of the ocean during this process of formation of mold water. So this is a very fast, you know, see the lines are going straight vertically to, to open this window to the atmosphere. But then at the end of the season, November, October, November, you have the ending of the, formation period, then you have to, uh, you start to get the warming from the surface and the isotherms here slowly are going down to that depth that they were uh, at equilibrium. And then you have the warming and uh, the warm season, you have the stratification and this uh, layer is isolated from the surface. And something that we can notice before the formation, the we have a, a uh, a layer, uh, uh, a layer thickness here, and then after the formation, the layer thickness gets much larger, and then it gets uh, reduced slowly, and then goes back to another uh, another formation uh, cycle. So this is you have to remember that this is Argo A. It went, it stayed around the same region, but it went to south and then came back. So that's why we have this uh, messy yeah, iso. Uh, terms, but it basically show, showing uh, something similar to what we saw in the first, first part here. And then, then the second uh, cycle and, and then goes on. 
And this is, this is the same plot as this one, but now for the salinity. Um, we don't see much difference in the salinity, although it, it follows the, the temperature in the, in the aspect of you have this uh, opening this uh, window to the atmosphere. And, but it's, we feel that it's not much controlled by the salinity, but the temperature. And the last plot here, it's the one that shows the potential vorticity. The potential vorticity, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's in the uh, range of uh, one, should be less than 1.5, 10 to the minus 10 per meter per second. And then also I marked the points that falls the, uh, follows the criteria of low potential vorticity. So at the, here at the beginning, we see the layer of the small potential vorticity here. And then we see it down all the time during the, during the whole time that we have the time series. And especially here, when we have the formation in the, in the temperature, we see the new mold water being formed. And as you can tell here, the new mold water, it's in the dark blue region, which means that it's even smaller potential vorticity compared to the one that we usually use to uh, track the, the mold water. So this uh, is an indication that we have a very strong convective mi mixing at the surface. And also you can tell from this distribution that there is the, the distinction between the old mold water and the new mold water. There is a small layer here, which is uh, separate both, but then after a while it go, get all mixed and then we cannot see it anymore. But the, the, the important thing is, since we are using an Argo flow that can resolve uh, such a, a high, uh, high resolution uh, scale, uh, that's, is, that's, why, that's why we can, uh, we can see this, this, ch this change or this division between them. And then it goes on. And well, another interesting thing is that when the spring and uh, summer comes, we have the restratification and you have here a very high uh, potential vorticity, which is showing us that it has a stratification. So this is the, the seasonal thermal plan. Ah, yeah, this is the Argo B. It's in a region that we can find mold water. It's all year round there, but the temperatures is a little higher. The temperature is a little higher compared to the region where Argo A was deployed. So we don't see that window. It, it, the temperature is not low enough to open that window to get the, the convective mixing. So even we can see that, but the temperature a little higher. So we don't get, uh, the region is not marked by the formation of mold water, but it just, uh, you can just see the presence of the mold water at the depth. And here, the, uh, the potential vorticity uh, showing the water at that region. And here we have uh, the winter, the region that you could have a potentially formation of the mold water, but it's not uh, enough. It, it doesn't have the, the right preconditioning for the formation, the, the thing that I mentioned in my first slide. So it, don't have, it doesn't have a right preconditioning to form the mold water. So you, but we can see the, the, the cycle of the, the water, uh, the stratification and cooling, and restratification and stuff. Okay, so um, uh, we try to map the volume of mold water since, since we are just talking about uh, um, measurements at points, but uh, how about if you take the big picture, what's the volume of mold water in that region? So how large is the volume? How much did it change? and how uh, it responds to remote uh, connection, teleconnection. So for that, we use another set of data. Now, uh, ISAS, in, in situ analysis system, it's uh, data provided by uh, Ifremer, by Gaillard et al. And it uses uh, Argo data and other uh, in situ uh, instruments, but it provides us with a globally interpolated TS at monthly uh, means from 2002 to 2018. And also we use uh, outputs from uh, models to see this uh, uh, determination of the volume. 
And then we found also in, the, in this uh, climatology, ISAS and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the model that we can find model water using the same criteria in the same region using the uh, cluster analysis, we find the, the distribution in the three types. And we also see uh, a map of when it's formed. So basically in the region of the Western boundary current here, you have the largest formation of mold water. It's the thickest part. And then this is the subsurface uh, type of mold water, the one that it's submerged. And, and from the studies, we also see that this, um, each type of the mold waters are driven by different uh, distinct local dynamics because each side of the, of the basin has a different uh, uh, dynamics uh, going on. So uh, here we see the total volume of mold water. So this is my time series. And in orange here, we see the water that's formed every year. So every year has this uh, spike of formation between July and October. And we can tell that some years you have more or less, depending on the, the conditions, atmospheric conditions. And in blue, we have the subsurface water. So it also has a seasonal cycle we, because we have water coming from the surface. So we have an increase and decrease. And decrease. And the decrease is because it loses water slowly by other internal processes, advection, subduction, and stuff. But you, we can also tell that this, uh, uh, the subsurface volume water also has different, uh, has an interannual uh, viability. And not only li linked to the formation, but linked to how much it loses water. So it, it's a complex system because then we have to find out what's making to uh, lose uh, water to the, to the deeper part of the ocean. And the volume has some anomalies. It's just anomaly of uh, volume saying that there are times that you have formation and others have a, a losing more water than it's gaining. Um, this is from a model. So also uh, the similar uh, kind of picture in the summer, fall, winter, and spring. And we see that the distribution of the mold water, this is the thickness for each uh, month, and we can tell that during the formation, so starting from July, then August, September, October, and November is the center of the formation period. And this is just to show that um, the the mean annual cycle, and in this in this grouping here, we have in in. Uh, in the black line, you have the total uh, annual cycle, but if we divide into two halves, we can tell that it's getting uh, more uh, intense. So there's an intensification of the formation of mold water. And also, if you take a look at here at the anomaly of the volume, anomaly just remove the seasonal cycle. You just remove this mean seasonal cycle here for the, the whole, the total volume uh, time series. We can tell there is a, change in, in regime. It seems that before uh, 80, 2000, something 2000, from eight, eight, 19, uh, 1980 to 2000, it, it had some characteristic. If you do a, a analysis here, you see that there's a different uh, um, frequency dominating this part of period. But then when we get to the later period now from 2000, so now it, it, it's more dominated by high frequency variability. And also just to show that this is not something that it's in the model, uh, in the blue line here, we have the ESAS data, uh, data that came from the climatology using uh, in situ data. So something changed in the ocean. And there are studies showing that uh, there were changes uh, in, in how the ocean is uh, behaving. And this is uh, to show you, uh, we took the, the El Nino index here. And this is showing that there are some, uh, in the, somehow there's a connection between what we observe here in the mold water formation in the South Atlantic to the El Nino index. Uh, that happens in the, in the Pacific Ocean. So the correlation with ENSO, uh, we have here, 
in, in the region, in the, the Western boundary current, you have a, a higher correlation uh, between uh, the formation or the uh, layer thickness of uh, mold water form in here. And here I show the, the, the table of the correlation here. You have a positive correlation and negative correlation here. And the ones that are marked are the one that has a, a significance level uh, of more than uh, uh, 90%. And then we have the high correlation of uh, positive correlation with ENSO in this part at the, yeah, at the level of correlation of 40, 40% here. And then we have a correlation of minus 40% correlation in here in this, in this system here. So um, the, the formation of the mold water, specifically on the Western side of the, the, the South Atlantic, it's somehow uh, correlated to changes in the interannual uh, variability. In the interannual scale is correlated to uh, El Nino oscillation. And then just let me go quickly uh, to try to finish my presentation and I'm going to show some results that we see we had recently, not published yet, uh, about the cruise that we had in 2018. And we are analyzing uh, right now this, the results of this cruise. And this is the region that we are uh, investigating in the formation of mold water. This is basically still in the Western boundary current. And during this cruise, we uh, released a glider in this region. And the glider uh, was programmed to perform this uh, trajectory in three months. So it was released in July and we uh, retrieved in October. But during that time, it was following that this region, which we knew that it was a region potentially uh, favorable to the formation of the mold water. And this is one of that section, a vertical section of glider. So this is temperature, salinity, and potential vorticity uh, section, like the one that I showed for Argo. And then this, uh, it's a, a little uh, confused to follow, uh, to understand this plot, because this is just following the track of uh, glider. So it's just going in the direction. So this is the past and this is the future because of the direction that it's going, it's going this way. So, but we see uh, the, the water, if you look at the potential vorticity, so in, in, here, in this region, we see that it's a very low potential vorticity and the temperature is in the range of mold water and also salinity. But because we are uh, uh, resolving high scale variability, we see that this feature like chimneys, uh, indicating, probably indicating that we have uh, some uh, convective uh, cells right there because of this uh, 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 cooling from the surface. So how fast is this uh, sampling, uh, the, this ocean uh, response during the formation? This is one of the uh, questions that we wanted to, to answer. And because of, we have this uh, very high uh, resolution vertical sampling, we can have an idea of this, uh, the, how much you know, of this mixing is going on and how much of the mixing affects not only vertically, but horizontally. And to, to look at the in influence or impact of this in a, a horizontal scale, we also uh, uh, use data from uh, sea surface temperature from Gears Muir uh, data from July to October during the time of the glider uh, trajectory. And we try to get some uh, uh, idea of how the time and space are correlated uh, together using autocorrelation functions and to see if you know, things that we observe, uh, how long it takes for something to change in horizontal and how long it takes to change things in the vertical. In the horizontal, we use uh, satellite data, but in the vertical, we have the, the, the profiles from, from Glider. And this is basically a comparison between the, the, a map of temperature and salinity. Sorry, just temperature. <laughs> this is just the temperature mean and the temperature uh, standard deviation uh, during the formation and six months earlier, not in the formation period. So this is from January, April, and this is from July, uh, October. So just to, to show here that the region during the formation 
we found we find the temperature that we are interested to see between 15 and 16 degrees but then when uh, it's in the summer season it's the, the distribution it's just a regular uh, uh, major major gradient um, so the temporal correlations we found here we we uh, we found that the response, the, the time that we find the maximum correlation, it could be something around two or three days. So it is how fast we need to change a temperature signal in that region during the, during the formation uh, period. So the ocean feels some uh, uh, cooling from uh, the surface, and then it, it, you could have a response in like two and three days. And during the during the non-formation period, this is uh, January to April, um, that is not much going on. It's sunny or, you know, maybe rain, but it, it takes uh, a much longer time, characteristic, characteristically, it takes much longer time to, to observe, for us to observe a change in the temperature uh, field from, uh, from SST. And this is uh, looking at the, the same kind of thing, but uh, looking for the spatial uh, scale, the spatial decorrelation scale. And then we found something that in the order of 20 kilometers, something that we can observe here. And in the region, uh, the same region, but a non formation, uh, it's a, it doesn't make, it's around the same thing, but it doesn't change much. So not much uh, that we can. Uh, take from the spatial uh, decoration. But if we plot now uh, the temporal scale and the spatial scale and in, a, in a single map, in a single plot, we can tell that during the, the formation period, although if you look at here, if, if you compare this to the spatial scale, it's more or less the same. It's something around 19 to 25 kilometers in, in the, the two periods of time. But the temporal scale, it's much more concentrated in the two or three days in the uh, region of uh, when the time the formation taking place. But during the normal non formation time, it, it, you can have a, a many different family of processes that it can uh, uh, happen at the same time. And it, you can have a, a very uh, large uh, possibility of ten temporal scales. And, just for us to take a look at this, uh, just a note. Uh, if you look for the Rossby radius of deformation in this region, it's at 31 kilometers. So considering the baroclinic bar first mode. So this is something that it's uh, within, uh, it's smaller than the radius of deformation. So we can think about it. It's affected by rotation or not but affected by rotation. We can tell that it's probably it's just a little bit uh, affected by rotation, but not much because it's a little uh, smaller than the radius. And just to uh, finish here, um, we, we see converging uh, results from data model and uh, to identify uh, the presence and the volume, estimated volume of the mold water. Uh, mold water, have, we have three types, different dis distinct uh, um, drivers. We found significant correlations with ENSO, which it was something that we were not finding. It was hard to find, but we finally, finally uh, identified this correlation. And then fast response to RC fluxes, it could be a determining factor to, uh, to define the correlation scales in time and space during the formation. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, I hope I didn't uh, invade too much uh, your time. <laughs> okay, thank so thank you, you very much. much. It was extremely interesting, exactly for what we we need in our students, that there are many of them uh, doing marine geosciences, so it's exactly what they need. I opened the podium for uh, for questions from the audience, <clears throat> and since I don't see also just jump in and ask questions. This, I just may ask a question. These students are students in oceanography or? 
marine science. Yeah, marine and... geology, some of them, oceanography, some others, and ah, even okay. marine geology. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, Olga. Thank you for the lecture. Um, I was wondering, you, you mainly discussed um, temperature and um, maybe density or um, the changes. Um, but like you showed on one of your plots, this uh, water mass can be in, in direct contact with the atmosphere. So I was wondering what other parameters are uniform and what maybe more interestingly, what are not. And so which parameters are changing? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, interesting question. Um, I, okay, um, since I'm, I'm just uh, looking at the physical oceanography parameters, I can tell more about that, but maybe there are other parameters that we can also use as an indicator, but mostly for all these studies that we use, um, just staying in the ballpark of the temperature and salinity is not enough for, for uh, uh, indication of mold water. So uh, the, the main, and the main uh, uh, point here is to find uh, a layer that it's homogeneous. So the homogeneous part, it's so as, I, as I, uh, you said, temperature, the temperature gradient is uh, one parameter to, to use. Uh, one per one one degree per hundred meters uh, level that we can use. Um, uh, the one that I use, potential vorticity, it's it's good. It's a, a physical uh, a parameter that you can follow. It has to do with the dynamics of the ocean. It's a a, a, a parameter that has to uh, conserve. So that parameter f over rho d rho dz it's basically uh well d, d rho dz it's the how much density changes in the depth and uh, uh, the depth but you have f which has to do with the fact that you have a rotating earth so it has to do with uh, uh, potential vorticity uh, conservation and overall so if you if you look at this um, uh, parameter which i called potential vorticity i'm basically following something that has uh, in it, uh, uh, the parameter is F over H, something that it has to conserve. And this is something that we follow to get the water um, tracked. The other parameter, it's important because it has uh, uh, D rho DZ, but the other parameter that we use in physical oceanography that can also be used to track mold water is something that we call the uh, buoyancy frequency. It's the uh, blunt uh frequency, which is uh, G over rho, D rho DZ. So again, D rho DZ, it's an important parameter so to, to use as an indicator of the water mass. Um, uh, basically, in the, in, in the physical parameters, uh, we use, what we use is uh, something that has to do with stratification. So it's a temperature uh, gradient and density gradient. So not uh, uh, oxygen would not be a part of the. I mean, usually it's on a CTD. Uh, it's a yes. So um, I'm not much familiar with the oxygen, but think about it. If the water is uh, getting uh, introduced into uh, to the deep layer, it you're taking water that's very highly oxygenated to to below. So I, I don't know if it does, during this mixing, how much is it gonna lose or not. I don't know how stable is the gradient of uh, oxygen in the length. We, I, I, I haven't looked at this uh, kind of data, but obviously it's something that we could take a look because this it's, it's a process that's bringing something quickly down to some hundred meters. Who, who knows it, you know, it keeps this uh, characteristics of being uh, homogeneous. Uh, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I haven't seen any work that uh, had done this uh, kind of analysis. My right. yeah. This is Thank something you. that I have to go and look at. I think it's very interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think work you, with the physical the, biological, yeah. I think some of the areas correlate with the oxygen minimum zones and then it, it must affect the biology there. And sure. I'm an infiltrator from my marine biology, so that's... Uh, <laughs> ah. Yeah, the, the one thing that I started to look at uh, was, uh, I had a student and then she didn't work 
uh, we didn't publish or anything, but it's something that we have to look at. It's the correlation between the nutrients and uh, mold water formation and something that happens. Okay, so you have, you have the thermocline, uh, you have the uh, nutricline. And what happens during the formation of the water uh, mold, mold water is because of uh, the, this window of uh, water mother, uh, what mold water formation going so deep. What happens is that during this time, the, the nutricline is exposed to more to this cold water, but it's you have it's not a, it's not that it's going up, but it's getting uh, no the the upper layer is getting access to the nutricline and then. Maybe you can have some, you know, bloom or something of uh, of uh, productivity during the formation. But this is something that we are still working. And there are study uh, in the North Atlantic showing that there is some correlation and there is some change in the the productivity related to the mold water. So uh, yeah, it's it, it's a great thing. Yeah, we have to explore these kind of things. It's very interesting. Yeah, super interesting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Somebody else has questions to uh, Professor Sato. Maybe maybe you can put in the chat. If you're not <laughs> yeah. if you like talking. Well, if nobody has a question, so we we can conclude. In any case, we are a little bit over the time. And I wish again to thank you very much, uh, Olga. I wonder if you would like to stay in touch with us for the future events that we have. Oh, sure. Yes, yes, please. And I can, sure. uh, I can tell our students here, maybe they can uh, also, can, can outside people have access to or Absolutely. watch this? The more the merrier. I don't know which oh, really? time is now in Brazil, so you can spread the word, yeah. Ah, okay. So I just send them the, the link for them to register in this. Absolutely. This yeah. Ah, okay. I'll do that. Yes. The more the merrier. The only thing okay. is that we have only one more seminar until the semester ends. But ah, and then the second will... semester also? You have no and then other... next year, but I will I will I will send ah. you the link so for next year. Okay. Okay. Because we are in the opposite uh, hemisphere, you know. I know, but yeah. Students. But but uh, next like... week we are going to Spain. Ah, wow. We have a, that's a good a... idea. Is is this a, a a class? This is a class. Yeah, it's the this department is... seminar basically. The ah, students okay. Are to attend, and ah. we have guests. Yeah. Okay. So we know for, with the COVID we moved to Zoom, and I think we are going to continue in Zoom because it's, it's a great excellent. idea for seminars for the classes. Yes. This can be yeah. <laughs> Well, thank okay. you very much, Olga, again. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Yeah. I hope to okay. see you. I should be in Brazil in November. I hope to oh, see you there. Okay. Are you coming to Sao Paulo? Yeah, exactly. If you do, oh, okay. Pay me a visit. Of course. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> see you. Have a bye good bye. day. See you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay,